This is the ET Wow electric kick scooter. I've looked at a, a couple different bikes or scooters like this in the past, including the Eco Rico M3 and the M5 and the Glion. Um, they, they each offer something a little bit different, but what stood out about this model was the front suspension and the rear suspension. That's actually a swing arm and there's like a, a spring right under the deck there, which is pretty cool. And it's available in three different flavors. So they've got Eco, Master, and Booster. A big difference is just the motor wattage. So it goes from 350 to 450 to 500. Now, this one is the booster and it has the highest top speed, which is 30 kilometers per hour. So it's pretty fast and strong, <laughs> surprisingly so. Uh, but, you know, it is a stand up kick scooter that folds, and, and sometimes at those higher speeds, I feel a little bit sketched out. Um, so, I don't know, worth kind of considering. They say it's got like uh, you know, 75 kilogram max load, which is kind of interesting. I, I couldn't see or imagine myself carrying too much more than just myself on this because, you know, if you look at the deck and then my feet, you know, there's really not a whole lot of space, even just for your feet. Um, that's part of what keeps it really portable and carryable. Like if you ride on a bus or a subway or something, this is a great option. Uh, maybe something that would be a little bit more stable than a skateboard, electric skateboard for a lot of people. It's sort of, sort of solving that last mile problem of getting to and from public transportation. It only weighs 24.2 pounds. I just weighed it a minute ago. That's really awesome in my opinion. I mean, it's a lot lighter than some of the other kick scooters and just really gives you, I don't know, it's, it's easier to lift. And you can lift it up right here by this handle. You can just pick the thing up and that's awesome. This also offers regenerative braking, which is pretty advanced. Uh, it, there's kind of this physical brake thing going on where you can push down on this fender while you're riding and you can even see it kind of scraped on the inside and that activates regen when you push down and there's like a second little trigger throttle. So this is the cockpit, which we're gonna get to later, but uh, throttle, regen. So it's like you've got like a little brake built in, but there isn't, there, it's not like it has calipers or actual levered brakes, you've just got that skid thing in the back. So considering the higher speeds and stuff, this is, uh, it's nice to have a physical stop just in case something went wrong with the electrical brake or you, you've completely filled the battery and regen might not work as well then. Uh, while we're down here, I wanna point out, it's kinda like these plastic ET Wow <laughs> wheels. Um, you know, on the front, it's solid because that's where the 500 watt gearless direct drive motor is. On the back, you've got this nice fin thing. And this is very front heavy, right? Like all the weight is in that, that front wheel. Whereas some of the other kick scooters, it's in the back. It's kind of, that's just kind of interesting to see. It's not super soft. These tires don't have air in them, which means they aren't going to get punctured. They're not going to go flat. Even if you ride over like glass or whatever, they're going to keep their shape. Um, but they're not quite as forgiving, and that's where the suspension comes in. So in my time riding it, it actually feels pretty good. You know, it's it's not too uncomfortable, which is important, especially if you're riding on for longer distances. There are some cool features in here as well in the control panel. You can actually set up like a cruise control where you press the acceleration and um, kind of keep that speed for a few seconds, cruise control will automatically start. And they also have like a zero start thing where if you're setting the spike up, uh, and normally you have to kick it, you know, keep go like by human power for a couple miles per hour before the throttle will start. You can also kind of disengage that. That's something I didn't really see a lot on the other scooters, um, including the horn, even including like this, this light, which is quite bright. So I guess I wanted to get some of those things out of the way before really jumping in and uh, talking about how it rides and stuff. Because it, it really, in my opinion, looks pretty sharp. Um, I definitely like, I like this thing from a visual standpoint, but it's maybe not quite as, I don't know, I, it, it's like a little bit wobbly sometimes, and, and the deck is a little small, but. Okay, so here, this is how I pick it up. Pick it up really close to the front, like that. See how it's, it's balanced like that, and that's because there's more weight in the front. To actually unlock it from this, you have to push down on the fender, so you can kind of do that with your foot. Maybe like that, there we go. Or I guess you can, yeah, I guess you gotta have to hold the fender down and then it unclips from this area right here. This long stem folds up and then there's that 
red thing that kind of clicks into place. And now, of course, we have these grips that sort of fold out into your handlebar. To get these to fold down, it was actually really confusing at first. There's this little bump, like just right there. You actually have to push in on that little bump and then pull out and fold down. I was pulling really hard and twisting, and they do kind of twist. See how they sort of rattle like that? I was really struggling to get this thing to fold um, initially, and so there's your, there's your tip. It's those little nipple things right there. Okay, and now from here, you can also raise up that stem. There's kind of a quick release lever here. And then you can slide, and there are two settings. There's the first one. If you want to go even higher, kind of punch that in. Whoop. And there we go. Yeah. It's always difficult to do kick scooters with one hand. There we go. Boom. There it is. Now we've got it. So see, this is full height. Works for me. I'm like 5'9". Feels a little bit more comfortable at that second, that second stop. So now that we've got the bike or the kick scooter <laughs> all unfolded, I wanted to point out this charging port right here. It's pretty nice. All the wires are kind of internally routed through this, this top or this stem, but uh, there's a disconnect point right there for the motor, so if you needed to do maintenance or something, you could. Here's that rear fender I was talking about where you just push down on it and it acts as a physical brake, but it also engages regen. And here's another view of that deck, I'm trying to get both feet on there. You know, there's really not a whole ton of room, but it works. It's good enough and it keeps it compact. Okay, let's get up to the display system. So you can see here, there's a few little icons. First one is power, kind of chirps, comes to life. You can see a battery level right there. You can see your speed in kilometers per hour. I haven't figured out how to get to miles per hour. Battery charge level, 100%. Light, I guess it just starts with the light on. It's pretty bright. That's pretty intense, it's like six LEDs in there. And then we've got the horn. Just extremely annoying and ear piercing. There's the light button. And then this S, which kind of changes through some of the readouts. Right now it shows our trip distance and odometer. So those are the two things. And then that is the brake lever or regen, and that is the throttle. And again, the reason that throttle's not working yet is because we haven't moved it. As soon as you start to move it, whoop, there it goes. So that's like a safety feature that so you don't accidentally bump this and take off when you don't mean to. I should probably clamp that down for safety and maybe point out this clip. That's what clips into your fender when it's folded. So yeah, 24.2 pounds. It's kind of all aluminum body. I like the white look. It rides, you know, fairly stable, but there is a little bit of, you know, rattle and jiggle up here in, in the grips. And they aren't super wide. So it's the kind of, you know, electric scooters are always a little bit like sketchy especially when it's raining, which it is right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. Just do a little bit of a ride and then maybe clamp a camera on. So here we go. Woo. I'm being real slow and stable because I don't want to go flying off this thing. And uh, again, it's just nice that they actually have a variable speed throttle right there. It works pretty well. Oh yeah, oh boy. And I don't know how I feel about front wheel drive versus rear wheel drive. It definitely changes the weight distribution, but it works well enough, you know? I, I was zooming around on this thing at top speed a minute ago and I felt kind of comfortable, but that was because I had both hands on the, on the grips, whoa. Um, so, I mean, I imagine having like a backpack on and scooting around on this, it would work, but my feet still, they're very cramped back there.
price on this is around a thousand bucks so it's not bad it's definitely cheaper than a lot of full-size electric bikes and it's just more compact it's going to be easier to carry this thing around or stow it uh, so yeah I guess that's kind of it. That's the ET Wow electric kick scooter. For the full write up on this, including specs, pictures, and stuff, I'll see you back at electricridereview.com. And if you have one of these, maybe I missed something, just chime in back at the site. Uh, maybe I'll see you on the forums. Ride safe.